Good morning. Happy Monday. Praise God. We're here again. Dedicated to studying His Word, to learning more about Him, and to draw closer to Him so that we may walk in His will and not sin against Him. Let's pray. Dear Father in Heaven, we come to you this morning thankful that you woke us once more, that you've given us another opportunity to experience your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Father, because you deserve our thanks, our respect, our praise, because you created all that exists. You manage your creation with love, patience, kindness, long-suffering, you treat us like we're your children. I thank you, Father. We don't deserve it, but we're blessed by the way that you treat your children. And we thank you. I pray, Lord, this lesson encourages someone to seek your face more intimately, more often, and with more desire and passion than before. I pray this in your Son, Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Amen. So, uh, today's daily devotional is titled Sure Prophecy. This is a prophecy from the book of Isaiah chapter 9 and verses 2 through 7. Let's read. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Thou hast multiplied the nation and not increased the joy. They joy before thee according to the joy in harvest and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil for thou hast broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder and the rod of his oppressor as in the day of Midian for every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Yes, it was declared in the book of Isaiah the prophet that Jesus Christ will be born and that his government shall rule forever. And it is. Our lesson this week is titled, The Savior is Born. <clears throat> the central truth of this lesson is that Jesus was born to be the Savior of the world. Uh, the focus of the lesson is to examine the events surrounding Christ's birth and accept Him as Savior. The evangelism emphasis is that Jesus was born to be the Savior of the world. Our golden text says, 
For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And that's from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 11. Okay, introductory commentary says, The birth of Jesus Christ has been called the most astonishing narrative in history. It is also the most blessed and unexpected. Who could have imagined God would be born on earth as a human child? Yet, looking back at this incredible event, it is seen as the most necessary of happenings. What could be more important than the loving creator of humankind seeing his handiwork lost in sin, becoming human, human and dying for our redemption? This is the unparalleled event we call the Incarnation. The Incarnation was made emphatic when the angel said to the shepherds, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Luke 2, 11. Christ was born unto those shepherds and just as surely unto us. The essence of Christian theology can be summarized in these three titles. Number one, the Savior, Christ the Lord. Number two, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Revelation 13.8 <clears throat> Jesus is the one to whom all Old Testament sacrifices pointed the atonement for our sins. And three, the anointed one, or the Messiah. These are the Greek and Hebrew meanings of the name Christ. By virtue of his obedience, Hebrews 12, 2, Philippians 2, verses 5 through 11, he is our Lord, our rightful ruler, the just master of all that we have and are. We are bought with a price, 1 Corinthians 6 and 20, even his own precious blood. Okay, section one of this lesson is titled Humble Birth. And 1A, the circumstances from the book of Luke chapter 2 verses 1 through 5 and it reads and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed verse 4 and Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David to be taxed with Mary his espoused wife being great with child the commentary says at the time of Jesus birth Cyrenius was governor of Syria verse 2 Herod the great was king of Judea and Augustus Caesar was the Roman Emperor verse 1 Augustus ruled over 120 million people half about 60 million were slaves a third more were freed men only 20 million were full citizens there were about 6 million people in Palestine. A universal census had been ordered by the Roman Emperor to determine the population of the empire. The f this first enrollment was followed by a second census 
to record property as a basis for taxation. The Roman plan was to register citizens in their places of residence, but the ancient Jewish custom was for everyone to go to the hometown of their respective family and be listed there. <clears throat> Joseph, a carpenter living in Nazareth, was compelled to travel southward 70 miles to Bethlehem since he was descended from King David who was born in Bethlehem. This happening was ordered by divine providence fulfilling the ancient prophecy of Micah chapter 5 verse 2. Joseph probably walked from Nazareth to Bethlehem while Mary his betrothed rode a donkey. Mary was also descended from David, but it is unclear whether the law required her presence with Joseph for the taking of the census. Mary knew, as did all Jewish maidens, that one day the Messiah of promise would make glad the heart of the mother chosen for the high mission of bearing him. But she had not expected to receive this high honor. Her response to the angel of the Annunciation was full of dignity and nobility. Quote, Behold, the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. End quote. From the book of Luke chapter 1 verse 38 she rose to the height of the promise of the Lord with all its wonder and mystery as she fully surrendered to the Lord's will amen amen so we start this story with Joseph and Mary uh, traveling to Bethlehem <clears throat> for the census that was uh, ordered by um, Caesar Augustus, the Roman Emperor. And tomorrow we will continue this lesson and discuss the birth uh, references chap Luke chapter 2 verses 6 through 7. So until tomorrow, be blessed, be obedient, and walk in the will of God by fellowshipping with Him. Thank you. Have a great day.